Welcome back to Strong Successful Male. So for today, I'm going to give an article titled, Women in the Friend Zone, Why You're Always the Friend, Not the Lover. And a big shout out to Pete for sending me this article. And guys, this whole article written by a woman is basically about how, guess what, women are being put in the friend zone too. And they don't like it. They don't like it for, obviously, nobody wants to be put in the friend zone by someone they like. Fair enough, goes both ways. But two, let's be honest here, it's women that are usually the ones that are putting guys in the friend zone, not the other way around, and we all know it. However, times are changing, as in more guys are becoming educated about how things really are. The, the code is called Crimson Capsule, because God forbid you say the other thing. Or because more guys are focusing on their purpose and making their purpose and their goals their number one priority, not women. Let's be honest, most guys tend to always put women as their number one priority. Chasing women is their number one thing to do and put their goals dead last. More guys are waking up to realize, you know what, I'm not doing that anymore because they never got me anywhere to begin with. Guys are now focusing on themselves, not the other way around, okay? And this is all coming together here where obviously more women are being put in the friend zone. So one part of this is obviously women are being put in the friend zone, not liking it. But two, this woman goes in to explain why a lot of these women are being put in the friend zone by things they're doing or things they're not doing. But before I go into this, guys, let me just quick go over something. This is important here. There are two types of friend zone. There's the friend zone that women put guys in, and there's the friend zone that guys put women in. And there are definite differences here. The friend zone that got, that women put guys in, this is when guys typically, the, the typical things that guys do to get put in the friend zone, like let's just say initially there was some, they started dating or there was something going on between them, but they were put in the friend zone. Almost always is because the guy was coming off, he was trying too hard. He was trying too hard to impress her. He was trying too hard to rush things. He was trying to do all these things that you see in the movies and TV that work, of course, in movies and TV, but in reality, do it doesn't work. He was obviously trying to get her to commit to a relationship too quickly. He was pouring her feel his feelings out to her. He was putting her on a pedestal. All these things that, again, some women say you should do, but actually they're turned off by, right? That's how the guy gets put in the friend zone. And when the guy's in the friend zone, what typically happens is the girl will still get together with him. She'll get together with him to talk about other dudes. She'll get together to talk about things that she needs to let out and vent about. I'd be more than happy to have him pay for her drinks, pay for her food, pay for her movie tickets, things like that. Also, when the guy's in the friend zone, the girl puts the guy in the friend zone, she'll be texting him because she enjoys the attention and validation and all that. But there's no action going on. Okay, there's no hooking up. Okay, and the guy typically goes along with this because he thinks that if he does, if he shows he's such a great guy and he's such a great friend and will listen to her problems and do all these nice things, that eventually she'll just wake up and realize the mistake she made and basically give him a chance or take him back. Okay, that's usually what happens in the hopes that he can get some. Now, now when it comes to the the friend zone that the guy puts the woman in, it's different. Okay. With us, you put a woman in the friend zone, usually it's because she's been trying to push the relationship too hard, okay? Guy maybe wants to basically just casually date, not get move things too fast. She's trying to push and rush for a relationship. Guy says no, but he doesn't mind getting some on occasion, and he knows darn well because she really likes him and wants to get back in his good graces, it's going to happen, Right? Or maybe let's just say that uh, they were dating, or maybe in a relationship, but she was getting starting to act masculine. She was try, probably trying to run the relationship, those type of things. And eventually, because this guy has some value, so that's it. We're done here. He's breaking up with her. But she didn't push him too far or too hard. They want, doesn't want anything to do with her, so he puts her in the friend zone. And then, now he's not going to go out with her. He's not going to take her out to eat or do any of those things like he did before because now she's a friend, okay? She doesn't get that treatment. The, the girls that he really likes, they're reserved for Friday and Saturday night and actually going out to eat. This girl in the friend zone, she gets to come over. She's invited over on a boring Wednesday night to watch Netflix and obviously connect the dots what's going to happen next. Or if it's, a, it's February and you're living in an area where it snows and it's snowing on Friday or Saturday night, then he might invite her over on a Friday or Saturday night in the snow because he knows that she'll drive over in the snow to come over in the hopes of getting a second chance with the guy. And of course, one thing leads to another. And there, see what I mean here. So when the girl puts the guy in the friend zone, he's not getting any. There's nothing going on, but she's getting the attention and validation and all that. When the guy puts the girl in the friend zone, 
he's not interested in hanging out and texting and going to no 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 no. It's just when it's a boring Wednesday or it's snowing on a Friday night, then she can come over and they're having some fun. Both are doing things in hopes to get the person back. That's the difference. Okay. Now not every guy's like this, but a lot are. Let's be honest here. Okay. But anyway, one has to ask, who's worse? Who's worse? The girl? getting the guy to go spend time with her, spend money on her, even though she knows darn well she's not interested, or the guy who invites her over and they have fun. That could be up for debate. Anyhow, I'm going to get through this article, guys, and uh, you'll see a little bit more about this. So it starts off. If you think it's impossible for women to be in the friend zone, you may want to think again. Women get friend zoned by guys, too, and for a variety of reasons. In the words of a local dating company, Lunch Actually, and NSYNC CEO herself, Violet Lim, when I was younger and single, I had plenty of guy friends, but that was the heart of the problem. To them, I was the friend only, not somebody worth of being romantic interest. Well, if she's a CEO right now and she's looking back when she was younger, I'm willing to bet you that she had masculine qualities that probably turned the guys off. Because you don't get to be a CEO unless you obviously have some very assertive, strong, masculine qualities to get your ass there. That's just how it is. So she probably turned these guys off by her masculine behavior. I don't know her, but I'm just making an educated guess. She says, whatever the reason is, being friends by the man you like is hard. You may even start to wonder if you are the queen of the friend zone, especially when you meet a string of men who just don't seem romantically interested in you. Well, that's when one has to ask, a woman has to ask, what is it that I'm saying or doing? What vibe am I putting out there that's turning guys off? Especially if the woman is good looking and has a good body and she's still turning guys off. One has to ask that. Now, typically what happens is that guys are blamed for this. Okay. Instead of just the woman saying, maybe there's something I'm saying or doing that's turning guys off as repelling men. No, 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 no. We'll just blame guys and say they're a-holes for not liking me or whatever. But this woman here is actually digging into the heart of the issue. What could be some of the problems, which is good. She says, while there's no hard and fast rules to making one specific man fall for you, there could be a few reasons why a woman is often overlooked as a romantic potential. Check out the six reasons below to see if you're making any of these mistakes. And believe me, these are classic mistakes. Uh, number one, you don't make the effort to groom yourself. Humans are visual people and men are even more so. Men tend to appreciate women who put in the effort to make themselves look better, especially on first impressions. Well, duh, it's not rocket science to figure that out. This does not mean you have to look like a supermodel in order to get their romantic attention. In fact, beautiful women may always get attention at first, but then personality and compatibility are what matters to sustain their attention. Look, everybody's obviously, both men and women are obviously attracted to those that are good looking and take care of themselves. But men, it's our number one thing. Looks and body type, number one for us. And if a woman doesn't make what is for every guy, because every guy's different, their bare minimum standards, it's not going to work. It doesn't make a difference how how cool she is, how kind she is, uh, just all sorts of good qualities, how great her personality is, her sense of humor, whatever, any shit that guys like. If we're not physically attracted, there's no chance. None. Okay? With women, looks are important, but they're not the number one thing. Okay? Now, don't get me wrong. Okay, you can have a woman that could be a 10 in the looks and body de- type department, but if her personality is like a one or a two, there are guys that would still go for her, believe it or not. But most guys would be like, not a chance in hell. They may hook up one time and kick her ass to the side of the road, but you see what I'm saying here? A lot of guys I know, given the choice by having a woman, like just say as a girlfriend or even a wife, if they want to go that far, Given the chance, the, the opportunity to have one that, say, was a 10 in the looks and body type department, but her personality was a 2, or they could have a woman that was, say, a 7 in the looks and body t- type department, good looking, kind of cute, all that, but her personality was like a 9 or a 10, extremely cool, extremely loyal, good sense of humor, all that, they would take the 7 like that, okay? And so would I, to be perfectly honest here, you know? I like 8s. Eights in the looks department, eights in the body type department, eight or nine, ten in the personality department, okay? They, they have some level of high maintenance, but not too much. You know, that's the good area because you get to the point where you get a nine or a ten, you're basically, it's 24-7 maintenance with them, and it's a big pain in the ass. And I'm sure plenty of you guys are aware of this. Anyhow, 
From fashion to hair to makeup to exercise, there are many ways you can explore to make yourself look more attractive to the opposite gender. Even if they may say, may say it, men will definitely notice the effort you put in your appearance. Yeah, men are always going to notice. Absolutely. So if a woman suddenly loses 20 pounds and gets her body more fit, she starts dressing sexier, all these different things, her hair over a course of a year, she grows it longer, we're going to notice. Absolutely. We may not say anything, and a lot of times I encourage you guys pretty much not to say anything because, you know, about validation, but it doesn't mean we don't notice. Says, the truth is, Violet says, you can always make yourself look better and more attractive. I just read that. If you don't know where to start, why not consider an image coaching class to get started and see how you can improve your self-image. There's always room for improvement. Absolutely. There's always things that can be done and help your situation. And a lot of women, unfortunately, don't like that. They think that he should like me as I am and blah, blah, blah. And that's this effinist uh, brainwashing that gets women to think this. But back in the day before the effinist movement didn't have its iron grip on things, a lot of women really were more feminine and took care of themselves, by and large. Well, thanks to the effinist movement, bye-bye on that because there's an attack on feminine women on that. And by the way, guys, yeah, I can see by looking at the camera here that everything's all bright. I, uh, I adjusted the thing wrong, and now the sun's coming out, so that's why my face is all white and looks kind of off here on the screen. Uh, number two, you always challenge others. You may be a strong and independent woman, ha, huh, and you should be proud of that. However, there's a fine line between being self-sufficient and being aggressive. Women may not even know when they have crossed it. Yeah, I can respect a woman that's self-sufficient. She's doing things for herself and achieving things. That's cool, really. But it's different when all of a sudden they are challenging everything you say and do and, and embracing masculine energy and masculine traits. It's a complete turnoff. No guy, no masculine guy wants to be out with a masculine woman. It's like two dudes on a date or two dudes in a relationship. So for women that are watching this and you have to happen to embrace these masculine features, you got to switch it off. It's not going to work, okay? You're going to turn guys off. And the only women that masculine women, the only guys that masculine women can get are feminine guys, okay? Because those guys are, they're feminine and they usually probably had masculine domineering mothers and that's just what they're attracted to. But the irony is the masculine women want masculine men. They don't like wimpy feminine guys, but the masculine men are completely repelled by that. It says the truth is women who are loud, pushy, and opinionated will find it hard to attract men. She said it, not me. Men in general don't want to constantly be challenged in a relationship or have their opinions overridden. They like the women who listen and are supportive. Right. This is not to say that you should change your personality into a mild or meek person, of course. However, there are ways to get your points across without seeming disrespectful. And I'm sure plenty of you guys have known women like this, either in the workplace or maybe in a a buddy's girlfriend, a wife that is like this, and you can't stand being around her, let alone actually have any kind of attraction. Even if she's hot, personalities like that, I know some women like this that are good looking, good bodies, but they're so masculine by their personalities. To me, they look like the elephant women. They're hideous. Goes on. This is not to say you should change your personality. I read that. When you converse with men, pay attention to your tone of voice, your choice of words, and if you interrupt them a lot, to get your point in. Being too aggressive may land you permanently in the friend zone. You bet your ass. Absolutely will land your ass in the friend zone. Uh, number three, you play hard to get. Oh, that pisses off a lot of guys. Men are not mind readers, so if you're interested in someone, let them know you're interested. Long gone are the days where my men have to always be the one who makes the first move. Ladies can do the same without appearing like they're trying too hard. Otherwise, they may just think you're being friendly or standoffish. This will make them hesitant to make a move as you don't seem interested in dating them yourself. Well, I don't mind girls making a move to an extent, but in my opinion, if they're being too much in that area, then they're actually starting to act like guys. So there's a balance there, in my opinion. Number four, you're only attracted to the wrong type of men. Yeah, that never happens. Never at all. Perhaps there are plenty of men who would love to date you, but you just don't notice them. Maybe so far, you're only interested in the wrong type of men, such as playboys or perpetual flirts, instead of paying attention to the men who are clearly not interested in the long-term commitment of a relationship. Why not get to know the men you brushed off because you thought they were boring or not cute? Yeah, good luck with that, lady. Good luck trying to get your typical girl to do that. Pretty much every girl that is probably under 35, 
they've had plenty of guys that, that they had opportunities that were good, nice guys, but they always pushed them aside for the bad boy types, the Chad and Tyrones, are trying to get the top percentage of guys. And ultimately, they know they shouldn't be doing it, but they do it anyway, so good luck there, trying to explain that. But and they, they wonder why the Chad and Tyrones, or the guys they, they really want, put them in the friend zone, right? Says here, if you only date a certain kind of man and the relationship did not always work out, maybe it's time for you to realize the pattern is not healthy. Do not get into a relationship expecting you can change someone. Rather, it's about accepting them despite their imperfections. Well, again, easier said than done here. Number five, you are always hanging out. When it comes to hanging out or going out with a man you like, make sure that you, are just, you aren't just hanging out as friends, especially if it's just the two of you. The more you hang out, the more Lily is, he sees you as just a friend. The hanging out won't change his mind. In fact, it may even lead him to think that you're fine with this friendship progressing the way it does as well. And that's true as well. Essentially, it's a catch-22 situation where the more you go out together as friends, the more he will see you as only a friend. If you felt attracted to a man you've known for a few months, yet he's not made a move to ask you out on a romantic date, it may be good to find out his feelings about you. Well, in nowhere is she mentioning are they actually hooking up in between here. She's not mentioning that, okay? But guys typically hang out with women for two reasons. Either one, they're, they're actually hooking up still. They're, they're going out, hanging out, and everything, but they're also hooking up. Okay, there's action going on. Or two... The guy, she put him in the friend zone. He's spending time with her in the hopes that one day he, he can change her mind or she'll wake up and realize how magical and wonderful he was to begin with. You know, that's the only reason generally. Uh, number six, you come off as too desperate. That's a big one. Women come, come off too de desperate as well, guys, and it's a complete turnoff. Just as guys being too desperate turns women off. Says here, finally, one of the biggest reasons women are often left in the friend zone is because they're too eager to get out of it. Much as how women are not attracted to men and they think are too desperate, the same is true for men as well. Guys, never act desperate, okay, at all, okay? In fact, let me just say this from the I should have said this in the beginning. Never, ever be in the friend zone. If a girl you've dated a few times or maybe she was your girlfriend and broke up with you but said, I just want to be friends and basically have you do the friend zone stuff, you don't accept that. Because if you do, you never. she's never going to respect you when she knows darn well that she wants more. And no self-respecting man is ever going to allow himself to be in the friend zone. However, if you absolutely don't, if you're the one that ends it with her and you put her in the friend zone, then that's a different ballgame. She says, much of the women, they're not attracted to men they think are too desperate. Men like women who are quite quietly self-assured and confident as they enjoy the chase. They like to throw winning a woman over, so a woman who acts as though she can be easily won over will seem less attractive. There is truth to that. To be happy in a relationship, you must first be happy even while alone. Develop new hobbies, take up classes, and add new experiences to your life without a partner. So this is good advice for women. It's also good advice for men. Once men see that you lead a fulfilling life of your own, they will start to feel that they want to be part of that fulfilling life in a special way too. Okay, I won't go, don't don't get too crazy here, honey. Okay, it's going a bit too far. If you don't take care of yourself physically and you're not sexy and attractive, good luck there. She says, when you stop making the above mistakes, you'll you'll soon find that, that you'll find that special someone who won't friend zone you. Good luck and happy dating. Well, again, don't go don't get too crazy, lady. But the point of this whole thing is, guys. Women get put in the friend zone too. They don't like it, okay, because let's be honest, you know, they're the ones generally put the guys in the friend zone, but it does happen. So, but anyhow, that'd be a good thing to go over here. And again, show you, show you guys the differences between when a woman puts a guy in the friend zone and how that dynamic works versus a guy that puts a girl in the friend zone, all that. But anyhow, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below and know what you think about this. Again, let me know what you think about this very bright screen here. It looks ridiculous. I, by the moment, I can see my face getting whiter and whiter by the fucking sun here but hey we all mess up and be sure to like the video share with your friends and subscribe and i'll catch you next time